How's it going? It's Dennis here, and today we're going to be doing assignment 8-1, the GIS tutorial workbook for version 10.1. I'm going to be using ArcGIS 10.4, but there are no differences between them. I've already tested it and ran through it. And uh, we're going to do this a little different than the other videos. Um, first, I'm going to start explaining a little bit about the topic, and then go around uh, the way the project's going to work, and then straight into, how, into the work. So... This assignment is about geocoding, and so pretty much a little background about exactly just what geocoding is. So, geocoding, um, this is the information that if you were to Google it, ArcGIS would give you. Uh, Ezri, at least, and this is, geocoding is a process of transformation and description of a location, such as a pair of coordinates, an address, or a name of a place to location on the Earth's surface. You can geocode by entering one location description at a time, or providing many of them at once in a table. The resulting locations are output as geographic features with attributes, which can be used for mapping or spatial analysis. And there's a more description right here, but the point is basically geocoding is like taking a table and displaying it spatially, right? So a bunch of businesses who have your address and they know that you love cake, they're going to make a map of everyone that loves cake, and they're going to go send flyers to the people with cake. And a real life example of this, or an example that I made is um, this, and this is geocoding of parks in South Florida, and um, more uh, directly, I guess, Broward County. And this is super simple, I just created a table with uh, you know parks and their addresses, and I used a street slayer provided by BrowardJS.com. And I went ahead and created this, it's super simple, super easy. And, you know, you can do quite a few with things with this uh, tool. And this is just a quick example, right? So maybe I wanted to plan a trip to all the parks in Broward County. Well, I can start making a table, and then I can make, you know, another field that says yes or no, or have I been here? And this is just the, an example of what geocoding is and how you can use it. <clears throat> okay. And this is how the project is going to flow. It's basically, the direction of uh, from the start from the beginning. It's the time that's good to map out your projects before you do them. So you just you kind of know where you're going with them, and then you can always look back and say, okay, this is the part we're at next. And this is good for you know any class or anything. And this is kind of how the uh, the map looks like. And so this is going to be the general workflow for 8-1. So going to review the topic, which we've already done. This is geocoding. And, of course, if you want to know more about exactly what it is they're talking about, household hazardous waste, I suggest you do look it up. It's pretty interesting, but, of course, not too important for what we're doing here. And then the very first thing we're going to do after that is create the MXD. We're going to set our projection. We're going to add our data. Then we're going to create an address locator. We're going to display these geocode addresses. We're going to spatially join layers. We're going to create a chloropleth map. We're going to label the counties, zips, etc., whatever it asks us to do. We're going to make the map beautiful. We're going to work on the design, make it really nice when we turn it in. It's really easy to understand. You know, make sure the most important things are is if you can't understand a map by looking at it without having someone explain it to you, it probably needs to be done a little bit better. They, you know, some people say if you look at a map in five seconds, you can't understand what it is, and the, the map hasn't done its job. So remember that. And of course, the last thing is forget how poorly we misspelled everything, because we're going to make it all nice right now. And this one's for me, right? Count the ums and ums that I made to try to fix it for the future. So this is the general 8-1 workflow, and this is pretty much everything we're going to do today. And we're going to jump right into it right now. Okay, now that we've got past the formalities, we're going to get straight into it. And the first step is to start with creating an mxd file so we're going to go to file save as and we're going to go into the esri press gist1 my assignments chapter 8 and 8-1 and i'm going to call mine 8-1 but you can call it whatever it is you have to call you can save it wherever you're going to find your data but it's always good to make sure you have it all in like the same folder so you kind of know where everything is that you're working in. All right, and I'm just gonna save it real here. 
the next thing I'm going to do is go to Map Document Properties. I'm going to store relative path names to data sources. OK. And now the third step is to set our projection. And we know from the book that it's UTM. Um, what is it? UTM NAD 1983 zone 19. 17, excuse me, 17. Okay, so we're going to use NAD 1983, zone 17 north. All right. Now we can start adding our data. So we're going to go up here to add data. And as always, in the your GIST1 folder, and this is going to be in data, United States GDP. And from this folder, it wants counties, PA zip and HHW zip codes. Okay. So I think it's going to reproject for us. Yeah. All right. That's fine. If it ends up being a problem, we can fix that later. And it wants us to add one more thing. And that's in Allegheny County, in the parks. So just gonna double check the layers here. And our projection is still this. Okay. Yeah. And the next thing it wants. Oh no no no. Oh yeah, this is fine actually. We forgot to create the GDB, but we can use that now since so we haven't made anything yet. So we're gonna go to my assignments. Chapter eight. A dash one, we're gonna go to new. File GDB. I call this 8-1. Okay. And now we were supposed to add the data, but eh, it's fine. Everything worked out for the best. And now we're going to go to 8-1. And we're going to go to New Address Locator. And Address Locator Style. So just in case you don't know how you would figure this out, or maybe uh, one way to figure it out is we'd open up what it is we're going to use for our reference data. And we know that we're going to use Pennsylvania zips. So we're going to open up the attribute table. You can see here there's no streets or anything, but we do have the zips. So if we go back to our GDB into the new address locator, and we take a look at address locator styles, just glancing over them. If you had no idea what you were doing, but you realized that all you have was the zip codes, you could probably guess that you'd use the five digit zip, and that's what we're going to use. And the reference data, as already mentioned, is PA zip. And we can see here what's going to be in this. And we're going to call this, is that a specific name wants us to call it? Zip locator or HHW zip locator. All right. Okay. Now I will say, when I was doing this earlier, I was having some problems that I kept saying a uh, background through an exception or background processing or something like that. Basically, what I had to do was exit out everything and just open up only ArcMap. Sometimes ArcMap has problems with like Spotify or you know browsers or whatever. So if you have that problem, just turn off everything. Just open up ArcMap and just do it. Okay, we have our zip locator. Now we're going to go to our HHW zip codes that we have here. And we're going to do geocode addresses. So you just right click, geocode addresses. All right, choose an address locator to use. The one we just made. It's only choice here is zip, so that's fine. Anything else here? Um, now we're going to call this HH, whoops, HHW zip code R. So that's a different name that you want it to call, but you know, for the sake of simplicity, we'll just do this. And we're going to save this as a file and personal GeoDays feature class because we're saving this in the GOD, GDB. Now, if you weren't saving it in the GDB, you would turn it into a shapefile, but we're going to save it as a feature class. 
Okay. So it says we have 99% matched and 1% unmatched. That's uh, that's pretty good. I don't think we're supposed to have 100% matched. And if we go to the rematch here, take a look at it. And we don't really have much to work up to figure out what's wrong with them or whatever. So 99% is good enough. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't ask you for 100% anyway. Okay, so we have all this here. We're going to switch from our list by source to list by drawing order. Okay, and now it wants us to join this here with the PA zips. So we're going to do that spatially. So we're going to right click PA zips. Go to join relates. Go to join. And we're going to join data by another layer based on spatial location. Okay. And does it have a specific name it wants to call this? I'm just going to call it HHW Reds. Okay. All right. So we're going to turn off this real quick. This. And we're going to go to properties, symbology, quantiles. And now we're going to choose count. We're going to go to classify over here. And we're going to use quantile method. Okay. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hollow this. And we're going to increase the width. And you can mess around with these as much as you decide. And we're going to label these. It's on top here. Okay. And now the other thing it wants us to do is to. So we create the chloropleth map. We have PA counties as polygons. Okay. Okay, so it kind of wants us to show us where there is none here. So it wants us to have PA zips to show where there's like nothing going on. So we have that right here. Um, it asks you to add a second PA zip. I'm not sure why, but I mean, we can just, just what with the white fill. Okay, that's fine, right? So, this is the areas that doesn't that wasn't uh, toll, uh, pulled, I guess, or whatever. Um, now it wants us to do this here. So we're gonna open up the attribute table of the parks attribute table. We're gonna go by label, and there's many ways you can do this. We're gonna search for North Park. So we see that right here. Now you can see here that's highlighted. So this is North Park that they're talking about in the um, the book. Okay, so we're going to zoom to layer here. And that's probably too much. Oops. Okay, so we have here our map. And what else do we want? Okay, so now we can see North Park location right here. So it wants us to... I'm going to change this to landscape. This is just a choice by me. Um, if your teachers or whoever you're working with wants you to do it a different way, always make sure to do whatever it is there they ask of you. And now it wants us you to add a text here to let you know that this is where North Park uh, is. So pretty much all the actual work is done and the rest of it is up to you to finish at this point. Um, I think you just have to add the text file, then make a legend, scale bar, north arrow, everything to make the, the map look nice and pretty. Um, I usually don't like to do this part because at this point this is up to you guys to create and make it look nice. Um, and I think that's it for 8-1. If you have any questions, just 
let me know in the comments. Um, you know, like and subscribe. It, I think it helps me out. I'm not sure. At least it gives me more interest to keep doing them because, you know, if I see people wanting, wanting them more, I'm more willing to go do them. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think that's it for 8-1. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, any requests of something other than the tutorials or more tutorials or whatever, uh, let me know. I read them and I try to do them as I can see fit time in. Summer is coming up, so I'll have a little time left. Excuse me, uh, more time. But yeah, thanks.